Hey guys, Mike here. In today's video, we're going to talk about pouring your own concrete slab. Now the one we're pouring here today is going to be for a garage. This one's about 30 by 26. Let me know down in the comments if you guys are thinking of trying to tackle something like this yourself, or if you're looking to hire somebody. And if you are looking to hire somebody, are you having a hard time finding somebody to at least even get back to you? Uh, we do a bunch of these garage slabs a year. We live in Maine, and yes, you can pour concrete right outside on the gravel just like this in Maine even though we have a lot of freeze thaw cycles as long as you do it right now most people that we work for in Maine when they're doing a garage slab like this they'll hire an excavator the excavator comes in and he digs out about two feet of the existing soil that's already there and he installs like what we call a three-quarter inch crushed gravel so he brings in about 18 inches of that and then as they're spreading the gravel down, about every six inches they compact it down nice and hard. So that's basically the base that we start with. Now we'll come in after that and we'll set up the 2x12s, we'll put the styrofoam down, the wire, the rebar and all that and get the slab ready. But some of the, some of the other things that I think about when I, when I start uh, scheduling these slabs is, number one is the weather. We, we got to have a good day. So. I'm looking, I'm looking down the road, you know, a day from now, two days from now, a week from now, and getting this slab scheduled with the concrete company. And I gotta hope it's gonna be a good day. If it calls for rain that morning or even early afternoon, you know, we're canceling this. So I gotta get the concrete on the books. And usually it's been a week to two weeks this year for scheduling concrete. So you gotta call them early. Basically what I do is I'll call up the concrete company, you know, I'll figure the yardage. Let's say for something like this, it's 13 yards. So I'll call them up, I'll say, you know, I need 13 yards, a 3500 PSI with fiber mesh, exterior mix, and mid-range water reducer. Uh, and these slabs we use uh, like a, a low to mid air content. So low to mid air. So that's basically what I tell them. And then I give them the date that I want it for in the time first thing in the morning we always pour 6 30 7 in the morning first thing we don't we never like pouring later than that although if, if that's the only time you can get it then you don't have much choice but um so that's basically what i tell them and then the morning of the slab the morning we're scheduled to do it you know i'm up 4 30 in the morning i'm watching the weather i usually watch three different channels unless I know the weather's going to be perfect, but if there's any chance of rain, I'm watching three different channels, you know, trying to trying to figure out for myself, should I take a chance on this if there's a chance of rain, or should I cancel it for another day? So that's, that's basically what I do first thing in the morning. And then if we decide to go with it, then I'm calling the concrete company up that morning. Usually they get there, you know, depending on what they're doing, 5.30ish or so. So I'll call them right up as soon as they get there and I'll say, yeah, it's a go. You know, my guys are going to be here at a certain amount of time, usually 545, and we're heading out. So as soon as, as soon as your drivers get there, send it. And, you know, obviously I've already given them the address and all that. So they, as soon as their guys come in, they load the trucks, they send it. Um, and then, you know, we're at the job just finishing up anything we need to finish up or just sitting there waiting for them. This particular job, this one was about a 40 minute ride from the shop, so that's pretty normal for us. Anything between 30 minutes and you know, 60, 70, even 80, 90 minutes is, is fairly common for us. So then the concrete shows up. Once the concrete shows up, you know, we back him into where we need him. We take his chutes off, we, we put the chutes on for him usually, and then we tell the driver what slump we want. Usually we tell him about a six, now remember, we're using mid-range water reducer, so we can pour with a with a mid-range in there. You can pour a good six or seven, is what we like to say. So, in, in the slump, the six or seven slump, is how we what would I say is how wet or how dry the concrete is. A six or seven slump is fairly loose, about like what we're pouring right now. It's pretty pretty easy to work with. Um, the guy's screeding. You can see Darren's bending over screeding on the inside. Eric's screeding right off the top of the form on the outside. And Luke's really the one doing most of the work, pushing or pulling the concrete. So if you got a good slump, that makes both those jobs easier. Screeding 
and moving it around with the rake or the come along there. So, you know, we, we de definitely dump out the first truck all at once. You don't have to do that, but there is a little bit of a time limit with those guys. So, I mean, they, most of the slips that you get from these con com concrete companies say about seven minutes per yard. So if there's seven yards on there, you know, that's, that's 49 minutes. That's a little bit under an hour it takes it. And that's really quite a bit of time, to be honest with you, if you have any idea of what you're doing. So if you've watched any, any number of my videos, you should have a pretty good idea of what you're doing. And if you need to know more, like I have more in-depth training in the Concrete Underground, there's a link for that down in the description below if you really want to learn how to do this. Um, but this video right here is the basics of how we get it. So then we get that first truck dumped out, get it screeded, get it bolt loaded, back the second one right in. You know, we don't really want much of a time lapse between them. And then we, we just start dumping him and getting him dumped out. So Darren's holding the chute. Most of the trucks we have that we use are rear dumps. If you've got, a, if you've got front discharge trucks, then, you know, obviously the driver's going to control the chute. You don't have to do that. Darren's also pulling the wire up and the rebar up with the wire puller he's got. Here I am. I just showed up. I'm a little bit late this morning. Not really. We showed up and uh, we we looked in the trucks and we, f we figured we didn't have any anchor bolts for this job. And the guy wanted anchor bolts to bolt his sill plate down. So I had to run to the hardware store and get these anchor bolts right here while the guy started pouring without me. So I'm going to just stick those anchor bolts in around the edges for the the builders so they can put their sill plate on but anyway get back to the second truck so we dump out most of the second truck we don't completely fill the inside of the forms right in but we'll get most of it filled in and then we'll go around like Eric's doing right now Eric's magging the edges right there we'll get our edges magged get this greeted and get it down to where we know we're not too too high and if we need a little bit more, then we'll just dump a little bit more in because we don't want to have to shovel a bunch out and have a big pile of concrete on the outside of the forms. That's going to make a mess. And as Eric's, Eric's in the green shirt right there, as he's mag, magging the edges, we also got a string around there that he's checking to make sure the forms stay nice and straight. So then once we get the edges all mag, then we jump right back on the screed again and you know, Darren's actually, Darren's on the inside on with the gray sweatshirt. He's what we call wet screeding off the concrete. So he's screeding right off the surface of the concrete. There's nothing else there. There's no board or pipe or anything there for him to screed off from. So he's, this is just how we were taught. But he's just barely touching the part of that floor that we've already both loaded. You know, he's not digging in, but he's not riding high or leaving any humps. So that's how we screed. I mean, you can put some type of uh, pipe or some guys use a, like a two by four there to screed off from if, if you've never done it before. But this is just how we've done it. We call this kick screed. And so this is pretty easy for us. There's also, I've got a bunch of other videos where we use actually a vibrating screed. You can use one of those too. Those have a little bit of a learning curve just like anything else, but. You don't need one of those to get something like this done. So like I said, we don't completely fill that area all then. We want to make sure we're not too high in there. And we definitely weren't. As you can see, Luke's kind of pushing, doing mostly just pushing concrete up to the guys to make sure they keep that area filled in as they screed. And then when we get down towards the end like this, now we can just lower the chute back down and dump a little bit more and get it close. You can see they're going to finish this thing up screen now. They'll stop right here. Darren will jump out. And then he'll reach from the outside. Then they'll finish that screening off just that, that way. And then, you know, basically you just got to finish bolt floating that. And if you're putting anchor bolts in like I am, you know, you want to get your anchor bolts right in get them set. And then you're just basically hanging around for it, waiting for it to cure up some more so you can power trial it if you're going to power trial it. That's what we do on these. We power trial everything. We never leave anything just both loaded like this, but I mean, those are the basics. Those are the things I think about when I'm pouring is just, you know, getting the forms up, getting the concrete figured, 
ordering the concrete in advance, setting the right day, making sure it's not going to rain that day, you know, showing up on the job. You don't want to be late. You want to beat the trucks there for sure. And then, you know, getting those trucks dumped right out is, is pretty key as fast as you can. Not having them sit around. As that concrete's sitting in those drums, it's, it's heating up and, and setting up in there. So you want to get it out of the drum as quick as you can. And then just getting it screed in, bolt floated, and then you're hanging around waiting for it. So those are the basics, guys. Let me know now in the comments if you've got any more questions. And if you want, like I said, if you want to learn more from me, the Concrete Underground, link for that is down in the description below. Click on that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.